Coach, thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line with the Minnesota Vikings. Off on first down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Daniil Hunter in there to sack him for a loss of six. And so much for that great field position to start the game. Now they're way behind the sticks. Can't wait to see what their second down call is going to look go. like now. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Now gone. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. Throwing on third, Goff. This is caught, it's Cooks. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. And there was absolutely zero pressure on the quarterback on that play. Third down, and he has all the time in the world to eventually find an open receiver for a first down pickup. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. From the gun on third down, Goff. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback, the ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. Murray. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. On the stop was Aaron Donald. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play. Holding him to no gain. That was second down throw for Cousins. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. LaMarcus Joyner with a pick. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. We'll check on his status when we get back. Uh, 
On first down, it's Gurley. Down to the 25. The tackle made there by Harrison Smith. One of my favorite safeties in the league is Harrison Smith. His ability to support in the run game, as we just saw there, that's key, but also can cover deep as well. Here's Goff now on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. you got to cash in and get some points. So they've been unable to capitalize on the great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. From the gun, here's gone. And that is incomplete. The former Pro Bowl linebacker Anthony Barr there to jar it free. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces them to settle for three. And it, it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. On second down, Cook. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. I remember the first time I saw Dalvin Cook play in college. I was watching him on TV, called a scouting friend of mine and said, who is this guy? He's special. And he said, dude, you're watching a home run hitter on the field. Yeah, he was special in Tallahassee. Left Florida State, their all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. Cousins from the gun on third. And he's able to find Diggs. The Vikings first down. Diggs able to find his way free and get the catch from Cousins. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. First down, here's Cousins. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. They'll run the counter with Murray. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. You got him. You got him. <laughs> you got him. 
So a third and nine and six defensive backs out there in the dive. Patrolling the passing lanes. From the gun, here's Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from it. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on I it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. So on fourth down, they bring on the Michigan man, Matt Wilde, to kick it away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns throw complete right side to cooks five yards on the catch there brings up second down I always laugh when people say what's the toughest route to defend and I'm like any of them especially if it's a good receiver that makes things very difficult but when you're running a drag right. route something right. short shallow going through defenders using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open that makes things tougher guys trying to get to the football now a draw as golf gives to Gurley and not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. It's Everson Griffin who made the tackle. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against him. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, oh. two drives with turnovers. <laughs> now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. That's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he's not going to get out of the end zone. Murray is taken down for the safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well, and they free kick it from the 20 now. Field it at the 20. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you got a decent chance of coming away with the football. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The 
Now Cousins here on the bootleg. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Morgan. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Play action now, Cousins. And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Daniel Carlson now for the Viking field goal. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. The kick by Carlson is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. After the made field goal, Carl Sinell sets up to kick this away. This is taken at his four. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 26. <laughs> Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He's got a man complete. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 41. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. Four down, four down. Check. Four down. Now it's gone. And this is going to be incomplete. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. On the right hash, officially, this will be a 51-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will push the lead up to five. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now 
than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And complete, right side, the tight end Rudolph. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. They go play action here on first down. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. The Vikings on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Cousins again, and that is incomplete. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. Here's Matt Wild now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. Looking to set for Woods, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-rounder, Trey Waynes. And a return across midfield into the 46-yard line. Looking for Woods that time. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Throw left side on target to Thielen. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Well, they obviously red man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. A first down throw for Cousins. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. And a nice gain of 21 yards. 
Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. First down, here's the run with Cook. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. They'll run it now out of the gun. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen from 10 yards out. And the Vikings are able to strike for six. Such an art to dot the I, just get the feet in right there against the line before going out of bounds. Such an incredibly graceful, athletic play, but also a lot of practice goes into it. They work on that to make sure that they learn how to train their feet to get down in bounds. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Carlson now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. He'll take this up just shy of the 40. Excellent display of footwork on that run. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. On second down, here's Goff. And this is incomplete. The former Pro Bowl linebacker Anthony Barr there to jar it free. Barr, I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with, some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting to 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. The Rams on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. Check. A shotgun snap for Goff. And this is going to be incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They start the drive with Cook. And he'll get him a little space here up to the five-yard line. 
There to make the tackle, Samson Abuka. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second down, Cousins. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And they'll get him down up past the 15. Try to find some space to operate, and now they'll have it. A gain of 12, a big first down to get away from the end zone. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do, and it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're gonna go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The Vikings on third down, two for five to this point. They need just a yard here, it's third and one. They'll run it. Here's Cook. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. I know it's the first half, but it's still hard to curb the enthusiasm for that stop. Third and one, and the offense can't get there. The defensive team has got to feel very good about themselves. Great job out leveraging the offense. Here's Matt Weil now as he's on to punt for L.A. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Was hoping to make a play there on the return with his speed. Instead, he makes a play for the other side. Yeah, and how many times have we heard coaches say, you know, sometimes it's not really about those X's and O's we draw up. It's about those Jimmys and Joes. <laughs> and when you have a punt returner, he's one of those Jimmys and Joes, one of the best athletes. He's unable to make the play that they were seeking, though. To the ground this time cook and able to push his way forward here for a good little game five yards on the pickup and that'll bring up a third down frustrating for a defense energizing for an offense finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game that'll make the guys carrying the ball very very happy Third down, Dalvin Cook. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Cousins. And too much on that one. It's out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Quarterbacking 101, never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle, and yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. And they've stopped them on the first two downs. Obviously, this is an important play coming up here. I think it's more so for the guys on defense because if they stop them here, I think they've set the tone for the entire game, how difficult it's going to be to score on them. Here we go. 
The Ram fans in this old stadium on their feet. Third and goal. Now Cousins. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, this from 34. Carlson able to put this one through. And it's now 13 to 8. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. After the made field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. This is taken at his four. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Then they'll get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Clock continuing to roll as the Rams try to get going again. Goff now looking to throw. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Gone. Throw left side, complete to count. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A nice gain of 21 yards. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on to it second down. Another dangerous throw there, partner. I mean, he's already thrown two interceptions here in the first half. I don't know if you want to keep throwing up 50-50 balls and you've had that kind of lack of success. Yeah, absolutely. Very well. Could have been a third interception in half number one. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Again, gone. He goes full extension, and he's got it. 13 yards down to the 13. When you're a player of his stature, you don't just circle the games on your team's calendar. You circle, circle the, the Pro Bowl? <laughs> without a doubt. That's a game that you just figure you're going to be in each and every year. That's because of catches like that. That's why he goes. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. From the red zone now, gone. He'll get this one to Cup, complete. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And they're trying to line up quickly here. Goff urging them on. Throwing again is gone. 
And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hughes. He's got daylight. He's at the 30. And he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A give. This is Cook. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He lost two there. And it's third down. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. On third down, Cousins. Open man is Thielen. It's complete. That one goes for 24 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. On first down, Murray. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. Well, Brandon, so much for halftime adjustments. They still can't get anything going on the ground. It may be time to loosen things up and start flinging it around a little bit. All right, now here we go. Handoff comes to Cook. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. It'll be a gain of seven, and they get it back to a third and three. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Vikings on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time it's third and three. Working out of the gun, Cousins looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. John Johnson with the INT. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. Well, partner, of all the great things that we saw in week one, unfortunately, there was some bad. Quite a few injuries. And the toughest one, Delaney Walker with that knee injury, he's gone for the year. Yeah, and that's really, really difficult for the Tennessee Titans to absorb because in a lot of ways, he's their number one target. He may play tight end, but he was the security blanket for Marcus Mariota. He'll be gone for the year. Greg Olson with the Carolina Panthers, he left the game in a walking boot but an injury of the same foot that was surgically repaired last year. And then there's some other injuries like Leonard Fournette with Jacksonville, Marquise Goodwin with San Francisco, Deshaun Jackson with Tampa Bay, Doug Baldwin with Seattle, and don't forget Keanu Neal with the Atlanta Falcons. He got hurt, came back, left again. He's gone for the season as well with an ACL. And he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him. That full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. 
Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Now gone. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. First down, L.A., golf finding Higby. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he's brought down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Gurley again here on first down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Brandon, we're into the second half, and this offense has not scored a lot of points, and that was another example of why. I think it's time to open things up and start really trying to move the ball. Now it's Brown, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. So two plays with only negative yardage to show, and now it's third and 16. Out of the gun, gone. That'll be caught by Cup, and he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the left hash, this from 37. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will cut the lead down to just two. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Here comes Sherrills. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Matt Longacre in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. From the gun, here's Cousins. Let's it fly for Treadwell. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. 
20, 10, touchdown Vikings. Laquan Treadwell, 84 yards. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. And there, a post route started out right, caught it in the middle of the field, went into the end zone. What typically makes those successful, those deep post routes? You need help from your complimentary receivers, okay? The guy that you want to give the ball is the guy that we just saw catch it and take it into the end zone. So he needs help from the other guys who have to occupy anyone in the middle of the field. Whether it's one safety, sometimes you get two guys in there, either run routes at them so they have to cover them, or somehow freeze them by running underneath them and hoping to draw them towards the line of scrimmage and throw it over his head. Carlson now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. <laughs> And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 27. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track and it cost him. Following the penalty, it's Gurley. <laughs> And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. 12 yards is the pick up there, and it'll be third down. In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys, and that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them, and now instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offense coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense. And they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Try to fire up that running game with Dalvin Cook. And he'll take this one only up to about the 21. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Now a second down throw for Cousins. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, 
better execution and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down to throw Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. This is taken at about the 14. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. The attempt on the dive, and he has it. What a catch. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Well, simply no sense in wasting a great catch like that on a short gain. Get downfield like you just did there and use it up that way. No dink and dunk. Yet another carry here tonight for Gurley. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Here's gone. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. 18, 18. Good. Throwing on third. Golf. Man open. It's cop. He's got it. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A Ram first down as Goff finds Cup. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now a play fake here on first down. And that's caught left side. It's Woods. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A huge play that time for the Rams. And even 40 yards. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Right. An incomplete pass on first down. Here's second and goal. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. This defense has not surrendered a touchdown yet. You better believe they're determined not to here on third and goal. Goff now looks to throw, and this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Tyler Higby from four yards out, and the Rams are able to get back within a touchdown.
They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Zerline good with a PAT. And the lead is down to two. Zerline out now to kick this one away. Here comes Sheryls. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. First down, here's Cousins. He's got it complete to Diggs, right side. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Michael Brockers in on the stop. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll get it down deep into Los Angeles territory. Cousins finding digs on a big one, 45 yards. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody who has that ability, they want them on their team. On the ground, it's Cook. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Again, it's Cook. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. On third down. That's Cook, and he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. The kick by Carlson is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down.
After the made field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. This will be fielded at the six. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. 15 yards through the air and a first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Golf on first down. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Daniil Hunter in there to get him again. The third time he sacked him here tonight. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? 180. To throw on second down is gone. And he's got room. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 27. And search a redemption from the pick six. Golf They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. First and ten, golf. And my goodness, another interception. Xavier Rhodes with a pick, and they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. The interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran a wrong pattern. Maybe some balls were tipped. It could be so many different things. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing them. Hey, go down, go down. Now a run with Cook. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. 
No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And that is incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it, when you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck, you don't have defensive backs making plays on the football, hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me one, Cito, when we're having a tough patch. This two shall pass, this two shall pass, and finally we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. A really nice gain of 25 yards. A good start there on first down. They've got to have this drive. No doubt about it. Down a couple of scores. They have to find a way to put it in the end zone. Chunk plays, explosive plays. That will be the key to this drive. Now golf on first down. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley. And that'll bring up second down. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. Here we go, Here we but go. correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. A shotgun snap for Gong. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. On first down, gone. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up a second down. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. again is gone. Throwing for his running back and he's got him complete. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. They'll wind up losing three yards here. Now gone. And it'll be third and ten now. And the third down pass falls incomplete. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And a diving grab. I think he got that. Yes. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Now a first down throw. Gone. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. A wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it 
or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise right. with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Goff throwing again. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. Again, golf. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. What a nightmarish game he's having now. Six interceptions that he has thrown. Absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? Hard to believe we're watching this and have seen it. But it just tells you about the game of football. They give it, and it taketh away. Yeah, the guys, though, that have thrown six interceptions in a game, the likes of Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, I think Joe Namath, he did it three times. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And he stopped immediately there. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Cousins. Open man here is Conklin. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As he'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Matt Wild now, standing right on his own five-yard line. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. A man who played on this very field for USC, Emerson Griffin, in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. And the spike comes now with just under 40 ticks left. The Rams on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and 16. From the gun, here's gone. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Mike Hughes. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And that one will pretty much erase any hopes of a fourth quarter comeback. With emphasis, interception, return for touchdown. Door closed, locked, reinforced. Carlson now to add the extra point. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful.
So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They're down big here late. I don't know, you just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And he'll indeed get him to the line and spike it here to stop the clock. And no, they can't connect on the pass. So that gets the clock down to 11. Time for probably two more plays. Got to go quickly, though. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Out of the gun, golf. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one, certainly defensively stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from Los Angeles.